that is a critical element in this process, is building that confidence and that trust with the agricultural community that some of these innovative solutions for conservation are actually compatible with their operation and vice versa. I'm Will McDowell with the Clark Fork Coalition and I work with the Watershed Restoration Coalition here in Deer Lodge as well. The Watershed Restoration Coalition uh, completed last year a big project at Cottonwood Bags Creek, an irrigation improvement project that has a lot of benefits uh, for the irrigator and for fish passage. This is a really significant project in the Cottonwood Watershed, but it doesn't solve all the problems in the Cottonwood Watershed. My name is Caleb Erling. I'm the fisheries management biologist for the Upper Clark Fork for Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. We came out to do an assessment of uh, diversion in a ditch system to um, evaluate entrainment of uh, West Slope cutthroat trout. The bread and butter to uh, West Slope cutthroat trout fishery is, is the spawning tributaries, the spawning and rearing tributaries without um, good connectivity, good cold, clean water, and uh, the ability for those fish to, to have the right habitats to spawn and rear and then out migrate back to the river, um, you know, you just won't have a cutthroat trout fishery. The big one is they've got to physically be able to get from the river to where they need to go to spawn. So it's got to have connectivity and then um, getting them past irrigation structures and other barriers is, is super important. What NRCS often does is find the way that we can get common ground between trying to improve natural resources like water quality, like wildlife habitat, like soil health, and making that make sense for individual landowners so that it is complementing their operation, which farms and ranches are a business, it's their livelihood, and also making sure that the taxpayers of the United States, which fund NRCS and fund the Farm Bill, where a lot of our, our money for these projects comes from, making sure that those taxpayers are getting something in return also in the form of wildlife habitat, water quality, and productive ecosystems. Uh, my name is Dan McQuarrie. I've lived here all my life, um, born and raised here, been on this place for 55 years. But we put a fish screen in to eliminate the fish going down the ditch. I think at one time they had, what, 400 fish in, in 400 yards of, of ditch. We just wanted to eliminate the fish going down the ditch and dying, so the reason we chose that fish screen is because there's no moving parts, it requires no electricity, and it requires no maintenance. The only thing it requires is a little cleaning with a brush once in a while. It's delivering all the water that I need for irrigation. I uh, didn't believe that that screen would deliver that much water, but it's delivered what it said it would deliver. Okay. He's got his full water right coming in off of Cottonwood Creek and coming down that canal. Once that water gets here into the concrete structure, it flows over the screen. 90% of the water flows down through the screen and out this canal this direction. 10% of the water comes across the screen, then it flows down to a pipe, and the pipe takes the debris and any fish that came over back down to the creek. One of the things that we need to get in perspective here is that a big project like the Cottonwood Bags Irrigation Improvement is one step on the road of really bringing back and restoring a fishery like native fish in the Cottonwood Creek watershed. The Natural Resource Damage Program came through with the biggest share of funding for this project because it really meets the goals of their aquatic restoration plan for the Upper Clark Fork. It's bringing back a native fishery and it's facilitating that upstream and downstream migration of fish that will bring the fishery back in the river. 
This is one part of a bigger strategy that needs to be put in place. And this is something that the WRC is working on with the Natural Resource Damage Program and Fish, Wildlife and Parks. What is that bigger strategy? What are the next priorities? What are the next steps, the next projects that need to be funded? And we need to build um, the confidence in the agricultural community that these kind of projects can work.